she wore blue velvet bluer than velvet was the night i was planning to make a four or even five part review of david lynch's blue velvet which was one of my most hated movies i would have discussed blue velvet on the basis of acting allegory and symbolism comparing blue velvet to three films that i think did a better job with those qualities but no the film had to get better on the second viewing here's my reaction after watching blue velvet again <laughs> it was okay oh shut up you knew this was coming I should make it clear, however, that I still don't like Blue Velvet, nor do I consider it a good movie. And even though I have some praise for Blue Velvet, there will still be some people who'll want me to go die in a fire. Blue Velvet is nicely shot and decently acted, and it has a very suspenseful climax, but it's still an unsatisfying jumble of themes and emotions, and the motivations of some of the characters still don't make any sense. Carl McLaughlin's character, Jeffrey Beaumont, is dull yet likable, but Laura Dern's character, Sandy, has a vacuous personality, and they don't have much chemistry together. Still, Dern and Isabella Rossellini are not bad acting-wise, and Rossellini in particular delivers an unhinged, desperate performance. Her emotions still shift jarringly from anger to fear and lust, and the scenes of erotica feel out of place and gratuitous after the rape scene. More importantly, it makes no sense that Jeffrey would be so drawn to Rossellini's character Dorothy. Need I remind you that Dorothy is a mentally unstable woman who enjoys being beaten, forced Jeffrey to undress, and stabbed him in the face? Some of the dialogue also still feels contrived. If there's anything Blue Velvet excels at, it's the cinematography, as Blue Velvet has very rich, pleasing colors, and the setup. In the opening few minutes, the blooming flowers, white picket fence, sunny locations, and the smiling man waving to the camera all contribute to an atmosphere of comfortable, idyllic suburbia. The entangled hose, the man's heart attack, and the shot of writhing insects beneath the grass are the first signs of discord, and foreshadow the seedy underworld Jeffrey discovers. Unfortunately, as with the conspiracy in Mulholland Drive, Blue Velvet lacks subtlety and has a good setup but a poor payoff. Lines such as, I'm discovering something that has always been hidden, why is there so much trouble in the world, and now it's dark, are extremely blatant in stating that there is a violent, lawless community beneath the wholesome facade of Lumberton. Lynch's strange surrealism in the second and third acts is actually to the film's detriment, as what Lynch does show us is too zany and silly to represent the criminal underworld. For one, Dorothy's apartment and the antagonist Frank Booth's hideout are too colorful, so there isn't much of a contrast between the good and bad sides of Lumberton. Ben, a friend and colleague of Frank, is a smooth, well-mannered and effeminate man who wears lipstick and sings karaoke for no reason. As Frank beats up Jeffrey, a frumpy woman in a pink dress is shown dancing on the roof of, roof of Frank's car, in another instance of strange for the sake of being strange. The karaoke scene, the dancing scene, and others may have been intended to, to show that Frank's company are less inhibited and predictable than the rest of Lumberton, but they simply feel silly and superfluous. The town of Lumberton is meant to feel too perfect, but the underworld depicted in the film goes too far and becomes faintly ridiculous. The entire film just feels unreal to me. But here's something on which my opinion hasn't budged. Dennis Hopper is still the worst part of Blue Velvet. Hopper's over-the-top acting can be attributed to Lynch's poor writing and direction. Yes, Frank is an intimidating sadist, but Hopper's performance feels overwrought and juvenile. Every other word he speaks is f**k. He addresses Jeffrey as f**ker or just f**k, and puerile lines such as, let's drink to f**k, I'm probably paraphrasing, and I wanna f**k, I'll f**k anything that moves, uh, make him seem like a kid posing as a tough guy. 
Frank is very threatening, but his immature, very immature dialogue makes him less credible than other crazy, over-the-top villains, such as Detective Stansfield in The Professional or Craig Toomey in The Langoliers. I'm more than willing to admit that my earlier review of Blue Velvet was a huge overreaction. There are plenty of films that are far worse and less technically competent than Blue Velvet, but I still don't think that David Lynch's Blue Velvet is a good movie. My reasons for disliking Blue Velvet are simply more nuanced and, hopefully, better reasoned. The motivations of Jeffrey and Dorothy still don't make sense, the acting is fine but nothing to write home about, the film's depiction of the Lumberton criminal underworld is unsubtle and too silly to be convincing, and the potty-mouthed Dennis Hopper plays a very juvenile villain. I don't know why Blue Velvet is one of David Lynch's most critically acclaimed movies, as I still don't like it, though not nearly as severely as before. The acting is mostly decent, the cinematography and editing are skillfully done, and the climax, in which Frank stalks through Dorothy's apartment in search of Jeffrey, is pretty riveting. I give Blue Velvet a revised rating of two and a half stars out of five. Thank you for watching. Cheers. And may the hate mail resume.